The Bible can only be understood in the light of the Romans, Calvin said. The Book of Romans is the central, pure gospel of the New Testament, Martin Luther said. In particular, Metzger's words, if Galatia is the Magna Charta of cosmic Christianity, the Book of Roman is the Constitution, prove that the Book of Romans is a book of profound doctrine, along with the Galatians of the New Testament. The first book to start studying the Bible is the Book of Romans. If you say you read the New Testament first, it's a good idea to start with the Book of Rome and then study the Gospel of John. That's why, the Book of Romans is not a complete organizational theology, it's a letter. It's a letter, but it deals with most Christian doctrines and theology. It was written in a highly well-organized polite letter because Rome, the recipient, was believed to be a cinematic and eternal city that transcended all authority on earth at the time. This letter was sent by the Apostle Paul in Corinthians around AD 56 to home churches, and saints spread in Rome. So the title is also, Pros Romanias, which means to the Romans in Greek. While the Apostle Paul stayed in 2 Corinthians around 1957, around the end of Paul's third mission trip, he felt the need to systematically explain the fundamental doctrine of Christian faith to the Roman Church, which ran out of the seed of the Gospel, but was not directly taught by the Apostles. Furthermore, Rome was the capital of the Roman Empire that dominated the world at the time, and delivering a systematic document of Christian faith was what he had always wanted for Paul, who dreamed of evangelizing the world. Also, Paul's earnest wish was to be sent to Spain with the help of Christians in Rome. Rome was described as a glorious achievement of humanity, while it was also criticized as a comprehensive sewer where debris from all parts of the empire flowed down. Rome boasted of its magnificent architecture, whereas it had many social, economic, and moral problems to solve. The Apostle Paul came to Rome from the south via the Abia Road and lived on a pension at first, but after being accessible for some time, he was sentenced and imprisoned in a dungeon in Marmor Time, near Rome Square. Paul was able to preach the gospel to people from all walks of life, from the emperor to prisoner, and according to legend, he was martyred at a point on Austin Road in 68 AD. At that time, Rome was the largest city globally, with about a million. At that time, Rome was the capital of the Roman Empire, covering almost all of Europe, North Africa, and East Asia. It was a sacred city full of wealth, but it was also a corrupt city full of decadence and entertainment in the polytheistic climate. Paul praises the saints of the Roman Church at the time who lived in them for their lives, were a very distinguished and oppressed minority. So the Apostle Paul, on the one hand, silenced the opponents who doubted the gospel he preached and wrote the Book of Romans for Roman church members who lived amid hardship and persecution in Rome. John Knox assumes that Paul, who declared the gospel around the companion of the Roman Empire, now intends to travel from the prototype to the north of the Roman Empire around the Mediterranean, to the western tip of Spain, and even North Africa to Alexandria to proclaim the gospel. Paul seems to have planned to reveal himself to the whole world, to the end of the earth. This book of Romans, organized so systematically that it is a kind of paper rather than a letter, can be divided into two parts. The first half, chapters 1 through 11, focus on the necessity and method of salvation and the entire redemption process achieved throughout the past, present, and future. In contrast, chapters 12 through 16 of the second half encourage you to live a pious and faithful life as a saint and a citizen of heaven based on the duty of salvation interpreted above. In short, this book of Romans broadly deals with the widespread problems of Christian doctrine related to Jesus' redemption ministry, such as why human salvation is needed, how the path is established, how the saving is ultimately done, and how to live the life of the person who owns it. So Martin Luther, who initiated the Reformation, said of the Book of Romans, it is the purest expression of the Gospel and the most important literature in the New Testament. Letters to Roman saints at the time of the First Church have been handed down by hand so far, affecting many countries and people. Saint Aurelius Augustine, who wrote, The City of God, Martin Luther, who initiated the Reformation, and John Bernyan, who wrote, The Great Journey, also lived a completely different life than before when they met the Romans. Their changed lives